Jane Wyman. Brought to you tonight by Crisco. Two out of three bake and fry with pure all vegetable Crisco. It's digestible. And now, Miss Wyman. Good evening. Doesn't it make you feel wonderful when you have a surprise for somebody? It makes me feel giggly and wonderfully happy inside. Now, I have a very delightful surprise for you. Our star tonight is a person who has brought many hours of warm laughter to millions of people. Joining us tonight as performer and director is the inimitable Ozzie Nelson. In our play, Ozzy, or rather Dr. Philip Dunning, research scientist, is amusingly involved in the singular task of dismissing his beautiful but inefficient secretary. But first, what's on your mind, Bill Goodwin? And now, as a curtain raiser, let's have a short serenade to a shortening. You use Crisco. I use Crisco. Two out of three who bake or fry use Crisco. Yum. Pies are never a bust. With Crisco. Yum. Tender flaky or crust. With Crisco. Yum. Crisco pies are just so sublime. Because you get perfect pie crust every time. It really isn't fair to keep this story from you any longer, so let's join Ozzie Nelson in Washington, D.C. in our play, Shoot the Moon. What is it I'm supposed to have done? You've thrown the egg in the pan. That's what you've done. But how? Let me read you the account of our chief's appearance before the Military Appropriations Committee yesterday. Congressman Ogermeyer challenged a $7 million request for the development of extremely long-range missiles capable of carrying an atomic warhead. Well, yes. <laughs> I see, Congressman Ogelmeyer said to the secretary seated on the stand, that you wish to develop a rocket with a range of 500,000 miles. 500,000 miles? Well, that's supposed to read 5,000 miles, not 500,000. What are we planning to do, asked Congressman Ogelmeyer of the perspiring secretary. Wage a preventative war against the people on the moon? But, but that was supposed to read 5,000 miles. It, it's just a mistake. I know it's a mistake. You know it's a mistake. But Congressman Ogelmeyer only knows what he reads in the reports we give him. I know, but anybody with an ounce of intelligence would know that was just a typographical error, that's all. We're supposed to be accurate around here, Dunning. We're not supposed to make typographical errors or any other kind of errors. Yes, sir. What's happened to you lately, anyway? Well, if you must know, sir, it's that girl. What girl? You mean you've fallen in love and can't keep your mind on your work? You know that's against government regulations. Uh, no, 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 it's nothing like that. It's my new secretary, Miss Peddleby. Well, what about her? Well, she's just no good, that's all. Oh, I don't mean she's no, she's a wonderful girl. She's beautiful, she has a fine personality, and I'm sure she'll make somebody an excellent wife. But she is, without a doubt, the world's worst secretary. Well, she looks mighty good to me, Dunning. Well, sure, she looks great, she's beautiful. But she can't type, she can't take dictation, she can't spell, she makes mistakes all over the place. Are you listening to me, sir? Yes, yes, go on. However, the, the mistake was my responsibility. Uh, I'll go in and apologize to the chief right now. No, no, that won't be necessary. I'll take care of this. Oh, thank you, sir. Good morning, Pumpkin. Good morning. Uh, Miss Peddleby. Oh, my goodness, your tie is crooked again. Well, maybe I like it that way. Are you mad at me, Pumpkin? Uh, Miss Peddleby, at the risk of sounding stuffy, may I remind you that my name is Dr. Dunning. I believe I've spoken to you before about the importance of maintaining the proper employer-employee relationship around here. But we're both employees of the government. Exactly. And as such, are subject to government regulations. You, Miss Peddleby, are a CAF-4, while I am a PG-5. And furthermore, you have been assigned to work for me. Well, I know that. But after all, you were the one that told me your name was Pumpkin. I told you that's what they called me when I was a small pumpkin, a, a, a small boy. 
I had several front teeth missing at the time. Besides, that was at the Christmas party. Well, you said it was at a Halloween party. Well, no, it was at a Halloween party that I lost the teeth. But it was at the office Christmas party I told you about the pumpkin business. And furthermore, it's pretty darn unsportsmanlike to repeat anything you see or hear at an office Christmas party. Well, I'm not supposed to be sportsmanlike. I'm supposed to be a secretary. Oh, well, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, do you by any chance recall a guided missiles report we sent into Congress a few days ago requesting an appropriation of $7 million to finance a new high-powered rocket? Of course I do. Oh, it's a lucky thing I read it over, too. I had rocket spelled R-A-C-K-E-T. I just caught it in time. Well, unfortunately, there's something else you didn't catch in time. Instead of a rocket that goes 5,000 miles, you put down 500,000 miles. Oh, for goodness sakes. <laughs> I can't seem to convince you that this sort of thing just isn't funny, particularly when these mistakes happen every day. Oh, now, how can you say that? You don't remember the embarrassment you caused me last week with the misspelling of Senator Stanky's name? Oh, well, those people get upset at the least little thing. By those people, you mean congressmen and senators? Well, certainly. Don't you remember how upset they got a few years ago just because somebody started shooting at them from the balcony? Well, and that's not something to get upset about when somebody shoots at you from a balcony. What kind of people do you come from, anyway? Very good stock, Pumpkin. The people in my family have always had wonderful children. Happy, healthy, well-adjusted children. And good for them. I assume our country is under attack, Dunning. Otherwise, I know you wouldn't dare break in here like that. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but that girl in my office has got to go. Miss Petleby? Yes, Miss Petleby. I know she's beautiful, but I just can't take it anymore. Well, what has she done now? Well, it's her whole general attitude. Instead of apologizing for her mistakes, or at least feeling sorry for them, she thinks the whole thing is a big joke. Well, you know how women are. No, I'm sorry, Dr. Rockenback, but I insist that you remove this girl from my office. There's no need to shout, Dunning. I'm not shout. I'm, I'm not shouting. Uh, I've done everything I could do. I've tried everything. Frankly, I've reached the end of my pumpkin. Uh, I'm, uh, my rope. What's this about a pumpkin? Oh, that has nothing to do with it. Uh, when I was a small boy, about five years old, some of my uh, teeth were... It oh, has... Dunning, old boy, you've been working too hard. You're no. coming apart at the seams. No, no. Now, maybe a little vacation. I don't need a vacation, Dr. Rockman. Look, I have important work to do, and I can do it. But I must insist that you remove this beautiful, incompetent girl from my office. Well, it isn't going to be easy having her fired, Dunning. Don't forget, in all your reports on her, you gave her an A-plus for efficiency. Well, chalk that up to old-fashioned chivalry. Besides, you don't have to fire her, do you? Can't you just have her transferred to some other office? Oh, that might be easier said than done. After all, she's only a CAF-4 in rating, you know. And this department has too many of those right now. Yeah? Say, I have an idea. I could have her promoted to CAF-5. Then we can unload her on another department. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> of course, it, it seems a shame to stick some other poor guy with her. Dummy, there are men in the world who wouldn't mind having Miss Petleby around. <laughs> yeah, I, I see what you mean. Well, uh, thank you very much, sir. What a sad, sad ending for a man who was once considered to be one of the brightest stars in the Caltech firmament. Uh, what man is that, sir? Me, it's Dunning! Oh, it's me. Always, uh, you, Dunning. I, I, well, uh, now, you will take care of this now, won't you, sir? Oh, yes, I will take care of this, won't I, sir? And after I've done that, I'll come down and stuff the raisins into your pablum. Oh, uh, <laughs> Small joke, is <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Did you call me, sir? Yes, Miss Hughes. Will you please go down to the cafeteria and get me a glass of milk and a piece of pie? Yes, sir. What kind of pie? Pumpkin. Pumpkin.
Good morning, Dr. Dudding. Oh, uh, I'm Miss Parkston, your new secretary. Oh, uh, how do you do? Shall I clean up this debris your former secretary left? Oh, whenever you get a chance. I take it she wasn't terribly tidy. Oh, well, uh, she's a very nice girl, though. I'm sure she is. Oh, how about this? She left some of her perfume behind. Shall I throw it out? Oh, well, I, uh, I think it'd be a shame to waste it. Whatever you say, sir. Oh, apparently Miss Petalby dictated a message for you on the dictaphone. I'll play it back for you in your office. Oh, what's, uh... Hiya, Pumpkin. Isn't it sad that my promotion has to separate us? I'm being booted up to jet propulsion, but somehow I can't get excited about it. Do you know why? Because I know it means not having your long, sad, darling old face around. I'm gonna miss you, Pumpkin. Goodbye. Shall I make a transcript of that for your files, Dr. Dunning? Oh, uh, no, thank you. That, that won't be necessary. Well, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. Miss Petalby is a highly emotional girl uh, with kind of a weird sense of humor. <laughs> but she's a very nice girl. I'm sure she is. Uh, it, it, you don't happen to know what they did to her, do you? What who did to her? No, no, I, I mean, uh, you know, uh, where they assigned her. Oh, haven't you heard? Uh, no. She was promoted from a CAF-4 to a CAF-5. And yeah. then, as if that weren't enough, they assigned her to that, that cute-looking Wendell Atkinson. Wendell Atkinson? You mean that good-for-nothing secretary-pinching wolf? That miserable fiend who chases those poor girls around his desk all day long? Please, Dr. Dunning. Mr. Atkinson's office is just above us. He might hear you. Well, I hope he does. That's a dreadful thing to do to poor Miss Petalby. Just give me a chance at him. I beg your pardon? Oh, oh, nothing, Dr. Denning. Nothing. I'm sure I wouldn't know, sir. <laughs> well, hi, you pumpkin. Oh. How have you been? Hi, Denning. Uh, Atkinson. Uh, say, uh, say, I don't want to sound jealous, old man, but who is that mad-looking chick you're with? That happens to be my new secretary. She's very efficient and a very nice girl. Shall I wait for you, Mr. Atkinson? I'll be right with you, honey. And I'll be seeing you, Dunning. You behave yourself, you sly dog, you. <laughs> Come on, honey. <laughs> honey. Hey, hey, Dunning, over here. <clears throat> what, you gonna say hello to me? Hello, Atkinson. Well, Phil boy, what's the good news in the guided missile department? Been bombing any friendly planets lately? <laughs> no, I'm afraid we haven't. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's the matter, old man? You seem discouraged about something. No, I'm not discouraged, but I am a little concerned. Look, Atkinson, I might as well get right to the point. I don't know if you know it or not, but Miss Petalby used to be my secretary. Now that you mention it, she did say something about it. Oh, a beautiful girl. Not a very good secretary, but a beautiful girl. And a very nice girl. Oh, indeed she is. And a beautiful girl. May I ask when you started calling her honey? Oh, I call all my secretaries honey. Saves me the trouble of remembering their names. <laughs> you know, Phil, for some unexplainable reason, my secretaries never seem to last very long. I guess they find the work too dull or something. You know darn well why they don't last very long. It's because they get tired of your chasing them around the desk all day. Hey, golly, Phil, I do believe you're serious about this thing. Well, of course I'm serious. And I'll tell you this much. If those thumps and crashes don't stop, I'm going to run an investigation and find out what's really going on up there. Thumps and crashes? 
Yes, thumps and crashes. And you'd better not take this lightly, either. Or haven't you heard about young Carter, who was shipped out to the Pacific testing area? They just found him cooking in his office. You know, Dunning, I'd be insulted at these accusations of yours if they weren't so doggone flattering. <laughs> well, just remember, you and I are scientists working on important projects. And I think our government is entitled to have us conduct ourselves with a little dignity and a sense of responsibility. <laughs> You know, sometimes when my wife is making pie crust, she makes a little extra. And we have pie crust crackers like these. They're great with milk or a cup of tea. You can dress them up with cinnamon and brown sugar, or put some jelly on them, or some grated cheese. Plain or fancy, they're very popular with kids and husbands, especially when the pastry's as light and flaky as this. And it always is when you make it with Crisco. You see, Crisco and this easy pastry method end pie crust failure. Thanks to that unfailing Crisco quality, you can turn out pies like this every time. Wonderful pies with perfect crust, because pure, all-vegetable Crisco ends pie crust problems. For instance, the water problem. How many times have you hesitated wondering how much water to put in? Well, with Crisco, no guesswork. Crisco is especially made to mix with water. And we can tell you exactly how much to use for exactly the right consistency. And how about that old re-rolling problem? Afraid to pick up the dough and start over? Why, you can reshape Crisco pie dough, roll it out two or three times if you need to. You'll still get wonderful pies like this. You see, shortening is the most important ingredient in flaky pie crust. So, if you want the best pie crust, you use the best shortening. And that's Crisco, the finest shortening money can buy. That unfailing Crisco quality ends pie crust failure. And now act two of tonight's play. Uh, is Dr. Rowkin back in? No, he isn't, Dr. Dunning. He's busy. He's on an important business conference. Oh, is he up in the conference room? No, out at the golf course. He asked me to take over for him. Is there anything I can do to help you? Uh, well, uh, you know, Mr. Atkinson's office is right above ours. And there have been some funny noises coming from there lately, and I've been getting a little concerned for Miss Peddleby's welfare. Miss Peddleby hasn't been working for Mr. Atkinson for several weeks. Well, are you sure? Oh, yes, I'm positive. And Mr. Atkinson isn't even occupying the office anymore. They're redecorating, tearing out some bookcases and things. Oh, well, how about that? And, and here I've... Well, uh, where has she been assigned, do you know? Well, it's kind of a long story. First, they assigned her to Dr. Henderson in uranium research. And it seems she took two hours for lunch for three days in a row, so he decided she just wouldn't work out. Oh, well, uh, did he fire her? Oh, no. You know Dr. Henderson. He never likes to fire anybody. They had her promoted to CAF-7 and reassigned her. CAF-7? Oh, yes. They had her promoted to CAF-6 when Mr. Atkinson had to let her go. Oh, well, how about that? Well, uh, where is she working now? Well, last I heard she was working for Dr. Willoughby in primary blast control. Oh, oh, well, that's great. Uh, Dr. Willoughby is a fine old gentleman. I'm sure she'll be perfectly safe. Uh, I was very happy working for him. Well, uh, thank you very much, Miss Hughes. Is there anything else I can do for you, Dr. Dunning? Well, uh, no, thanks a lot. Dr. Dunning. Good morning. I was hoping I could get my nails clipped and out of the way before you got here. Oh, that's okay. Oh, by the way, I heard something that might interest you. Oh, oh if it's about Miss Peddleby, Dr. Rockenbach just filled me in on the situation. I think she'll be very happy working for Dr. Willoughby. Who? Oh, uh, haven't you heard? She's been given a CAF-7 rating, and she's working for old Dr. Willoughby. 
Dr. Dunning! Oh, uh, yes? I'm afraid you're a little behind the news. Miss Petalby hasn't been with Dr. Willoughby for some time now. Oh, well, are you sure of that? I'm positive. The girls in the locker room were just talking about it. It seems Mrs. Willoughby is a very jealous woman. And she took one look at Miss Petalby, and that was that. Well, that wasn't very fair to Miss Petalby. Uh, did they fire her? No. It seems for some reason or other, nobody wants to fire her. So they booted her up another grade. And in two weeks' time, she went from Mr. Holbert to Mr. Riney to Mr. Bonds and was finally assigned to Mr. Pepin in overall planning with a rating of CAF-9. You mean Horace Pepin, the guy who's been divorced by three wives for philandering? Well, I wouldn't know about that. Well, I would. His office is right across the court from here and he never pulls the shades down. Well, they're pulled down now. Dr. Dennis. No, no! Oh, I'm sorry to barge in on you. I didn't realize you were busy. Well, I am. I'm looking out the, the window here. sake, Dunning, what are you trying to do? That's just what I want to ask you, Pepin. Oh, well, who is this? Oh, I don't believe you've met my wife. Uh, Mrs. Pepin, Dr. Dunning. Oh, oh. <laughs> Gee, I I'm sorry. We were about to go out to dinner. Would you like to join us? Oh, uh, no, thank you. No. <laughs> Oh, good morning, Dr. Dunning. Good morning. Uh, Dr. Rockenberg would like to see you in his office right away. Oh, thank you. What uh, happened to your arm? Oh, I uh, uh, bumped into a door. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Thank you. Dunning! Why don't you come in that door like everybody else? Well, no, I never come in that door. I know you don't. What's the matter with your arm? No, oh, uh, well, I, uh, I was playing polo and I, I fell off my horse. Oh, well, you ask a silly question, you get a silly answer. Uh, uh, may I ask why you sent for me, sir? You certainly may. Dunning, who do you think is sitting in my outer office? Your secretary, I presume. Exactly, my new secretary. She was just assigned to me this morning with a junior executive rating of CAF-14. Oh, now, wait a minute. Exactly. Miss Petalby. Oh, well, this is awful. You have important work to be done, and, and she makes mistakes all over the place. She can't spell, she can't type, she can't even take dictation. Take dictation? Are you kidding? How can you give dictation to a CAF-14? That would be like telling a major general to sweep out the mess hall. Yeah, I see what you mean. But that's not all. What do you think Mrs. Raukenbach is going to say when she walks in here and finds I've got Miss America for a secretary? Maybe you could have her transfer it again. Where to? She outranks everyone in the department except me. And I... Say, I've got it. I've got it. What are you talking about? It's right here in the regulations. Listen to this. Married couple, section eight. 
No married couples may be employed in the same department of Group A type work. Phil, old boy, you got us into this, and by George, you're going to get us out of it. You mean, you think I ought to marry the girl? Certainly. You owe it to me and to the department. More than that, it's your duty to your country to make the sacrifice and marry that beautiful, luscious creature in there. Gee, suppose she won't have me. Of course she will. Why wouldn't she? Well, uh, for one thing, how am I going to support a wife on the pitiful salary you pay me? A beautiful girl like that? Okay, you got a 10% raise. Make it 20%. 15 and not a penny more. This is blackmail. Well, you drive a hard bargain, Rockenbach. White Pumpkin, what are you doing here? He's come to propose to you, Miss Petalby. He thinks you're the most beautiful creature in this whole wide world. He'd like to dedicate the rest of his life to making you happy. I want you now and forever. I want to take you in my arms and smother you with passionate kisses. Forever, darling. Forever and ever. And ever. Suddenly, a shot rang out, followed by a piercing scream. What was that, she cried. I tell you, there's nothing better than a good love story. While we're waiting for Jane Wyman's return to chat with us from the stage of next week's show, let's have a little music. Four cakes of ivory, the personal size, tied up in one. Surprise! You can't tie this four in one for value. Now you can get four cakes of personal size ivory tied up in one. What a value. This four cake beauty bundle costs about the same price as three cakes of any other leading toilet soap. Like getting an extra cake free. And for your bath, you can't tie personal size ivory. It floats, so it's handy. It lathers faster than any other leading bath soap. And it's ivory mild. Feels so refreshing. So look for the package with the ribbon bow. Buy the beauty bundle of personal size ivory. Four cakes in one. You'll save. You can't tie this four in one for value. Thank you for being with us again. It's almost time to say goodnight. But before I do, I want you to meet Charles Drake, who will appear with me in next week's story, The Sound of Thunder. Good evening. Next week, Jane and I take you to many fascinating places. To New York, to Buenos Aires, to Paris. Oh, and Paris is a wonderful place, particularly if you're in love. And that's what Sound of Thunder is. It's a love story. We'll see you next week. So until then, good night. Jane Wyman has been presented by Procter & Gamble for Ivory Soap. More doctors advise ivory than any other skin soap. 99 and 44 one hundredths percent pure. It floats. Be sure to join us for the Loretta Young Show next Sunday and every Sunday night over most of these same stations.